So here we are. On, uh, this was page three, but remember how we're changing our labeling. So we did this on page A, and now we're going to call this page B. And in our table of contents, we are, oops, apparently I'm behind. B is going to be a page all about division. Yay! So I recognize that you were supposed to have learned division, but I also know from my years teaching sixth grade, doesn't you don't always come feeling super confident. First thing I need you to know is I call this a Backstreet Boy division. And in case you're too young, the Backstreet Boys have a song where they say, I want it that way. And that is what we're going for. I want it that way. You have to divide this way. This is like we talked about in multiplication. This is the traditional algorithm, the algorithm that people have been using for a long time to divide. And that is what you are going to do. And if you learned a different strategy in fifth grade that worked well for you, sixth grade is a great time to learn a new strategy. And we're using this because the other strategies you've used do not work as well when it is time to divide fractions or to use them with algebra. So we really need you to level up if you haven't already. So first of all, just like we talked about with multiplication is addition repeated, division is repeated subtraction. So when we ask a question like, um, what is 10 divided by 2? What we're really asking is how many times can I subtract 2 from 10? And I apologize that my last page kind of bled through, so it might be kind of hard to see. So when we think about that, um, if we have 10 dots, we have 10 dots, and we want to know how many groups of two we can make. Two, three, four, five. 10 divided by two is five, because we can subtract two we can make five groups of two. So with the traditional algorithm, here we finally come into the algorithm the way you need to do it. We would start with the big number under the house, the number that you're splitting up. And outside, we would have the number you're dividing by. So we have the dividend is under here and the divisor is out here. Now I would ask myself, how many times does 2 go into 10? 2 goes into 10 five times. 5 times 2 is 10. So I subtract my dividend minus what I just multiplied. Leaves me with 0 and if I had any more to bring down I would, but 5 is my answer. So I want you to remember the acronym DMSB. Does McDonald's serve burgers? And what I really mean by that is divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. So let's try another one, a little bit more difficult. Uh, let's do a three digit divided by a two digit instead of just a two digit. So let's do um, 750 divided by four. So I'm gonna say 750 is my dividend, the bigger one. 
That's what I'm splitting up. I'm dividing by four. That's my divisor. Now I ask myself, I go one number at a time. So first I'm gonna ask myself, divide. Can, div can four divide into seven? Yes, it can. How many times does four fit into seven? It fits in one time. So I write the one directly on top of the seven because that was the number I was talking about. Now M, I multiply. One times four is four. And I write it directly under seven because that's the number I'm doing. S for subtract. Seven minus four is three. Now this is a great checkpoint. If I end up with a number right here that's bigger than four, I did something wrong because that means I could have gotten another group in. So if this number ends up bigger than this number, you got a problem, but it's smaller, so we're good. So now B for bring down, I bring down the next number. So now, and if people are gonna go wonky, this is usually where it happens right here. They forget what they're bringing down. So now I'm not even thinking about this number anymore. Now I'm thinking about the number 35. D, divide, does four fit into 35? Yes, it does. How many times can I get four into 35? This is where it really helps to know my math facts because I know four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16, four times five is 20, four times six is 24, four times seven is 28, four times, yeah, seven is 28, four times nine is 30, Hold on, something has gone wrong. Four times eight is 32. Four times nine is 36. That's too big. So apparently four goes into 35 eight times. So I there's my divide. M for multiply. Eight times four is 32. S, subtract. 35 minus 32 is three. And again, if this number was bigger than that number, I'd have a problem, but three is smaller, so I'm good. B for bring down. All right, I'm gonna do it again. Now again, I'm not thinking about this anymore. I'm thinking about the number 30, because that's my new number. Does four go into 30? Yes. How many times does it go in? Well, I just practiced my fours facts, and I know that four times seven is 28, four times eight is 32, that's too big. So I'm gonna do four times seven. 7 times 4 multiply is 28. S, subtract. 30 minus 28 is 2. B for bring down. Now, I don't have anything left to bring down. So at this point, I would say I have 187 with a remainder of 2. Now, depending on what kind of a problem, what unit that was, I might do a couple different things. If it was a word problem and it said, I have 750 pieces of candy, and I can put four pieces of candy in each bag, how many bags can I make? Well, then I would just say 187 because the remaining two, I can't make another bag with it. Um, I might make it into a fraction where I put the remainder over the denominator. So I might say 187 and two fourths, which is equivalent to 187 and one half, because maybe it was how many bags can I make? And you say, well, you can make 187 and a half bags or 187 and two fourths bags. Or maybe it's, I have 187 people coming to this, or I have 750 people coming to this party. I can seat four people at a table. How many tables do I need to order? Well, if I have 187 tables, that's not enough tables for everyone. So I'm gonna need to order 188 tables so that these two people have a place to sit. So what you do with the remainder has a lot to do with what you do with what kind of a problem it is. I want to show you just to get you thinking on this. This is what you would do, though, as we get going and we do decimals. You would add a decimal right here and you'd start adding zeros because 750.0 is the same as 750. Then you can bring down that zero. So now you'd go, how many times does four go into 20? Four goes into 20 five times. Five times four is 20. Subtract, 20 minus 20 is zero. Bring down, I don't have anything left to bring down. So the precise answer would be 187.5. That's how we divide. Let's do another one. I'll try to make this one not have a remainder.
Um, let's do 676 divided by 2. So start by setting up your problem. So you should have the dividend 676 under and the divisor 2 off to the side. All right. Now we go. Does 2 fit into 6? Yes, it does. How many times does it fit into 6? 3. There's my D for divide. Multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. B, bring down. Try to do the rest of it, and then we'll check it. Is that what you got? All right, last thing I want to show you, I know this has been a longer video, is that this also, the same process works when you have a two-digit divisor. It took me a second to remember the word. So I'm going to steal this one from your book, 5,424 divided by 52. Whew, that seems really challenging to do. Let's try it, though. We have our divide, dividend. We have our divisor. Now I say, does 52 fit into 5? Nope, it doesn't. So I'm going to right away move over to 54. Does 52 fit into 54? Sure does. How many times uh, can 52 fit into 54? Once. Or another way of asking that is, how many groups of 52 can I make out of 54? I can make one group. Okay, so there's my D, M, multiply. 1 times 52 is 52. S, subtract. B, bring down. Okay? Remember, I'm thinking now not about this number. I'm on to this one. Can 52, can I make a group of 52 out of 22? No, I can't. This is another very common place to make a mistake. So here I have to write, how many groups can I make? Zero. I can make zero groups. If I want to, I can go all the way with that. Zero times 52 is zero. 22 minus zero is still 22. B, bring down. 224 is what I have to work with. Now, at this point, you might be going, Miss Funk, I know my math facts, but I don't know my 52s. That's okay. You don't have to because you know at this point, it's you are just going to check until you can get close. So in my head, I'm going, all right, if I think of this as 50 and this as 200, I'm going to guess it might go in four times. Maybe. So I'm going to do 52 times 4 and see if I'm right. Can four 52s fit into 224? So I have 208. Now I can check and see, can I get five 52s in there? Some of you might already go, Miss Funk, you know you won't be able to. I do, but I want to check. 260 is too big, so I can't do five 52s, but I can do four. So 52 can go into 224 four times. Four times 52, I already know because I did my work over here, is 208. 224 minus 208 is 16. And bring down, there's nothing left to bring down. And at this point, I'm just going to call that my remainder. 104 remainder 16. Okay. There's division. Here's to learning it together. I gotta find my...